This is Valley News Live at 4. Well, we begin with the breaking news on the Arthur Colley trial. Jurors have reached the verdict of guilty on all counts. And right now we want to send things right over to crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley, who has been covering this trial. Bailey, what can you tell us at this time? Yeah, Bobby, emotions ran high both inside and outside of the courtroom after that verdict was read. A verdict that only took less than two hours for jurors to come to finding Arthur Colley guilty on all three counts against him, including the mur murder of 14 year old Jupiter Paulson, the aggravated assault and robbery that happened in the moments after that brutal attack that prosecutors say lasted more than 30 minutes. Now I talked with Jupiter's family. They say this was the best case scenario and say they can now finally start their healing journey. I talked with Jupiter's mom, Antonia, and she's, I asked her if she talks to Jupiter ever. She says yes every single day. She says she tells her good, good morning and that she loves her. I asked her what she would tell Jupiter in that exact moment. Take a listen to what she said. He got him. He got him and it's over. Rest and just know that justice was served, justice for Jupiter. Now, Kali will be sentenced later this year, if not early 2023. He faces a maximum of life in prison without the possibility of parole. I did speak with prosecutor Ryan Youngren, and he says while it ultimately is up to the judge what that sentence will be, the state will be pushing for the maximum. Live in front of the Cass County Courthouse today, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Bailey, thank you for that report. And now taking a look outside at our sky camera right now, things are looking pretty, a little bit clearer right now. We do have a lot of clouds, but that is going to be changing pretty soon. Let's head over to the summer snowbox with a look at our forecast. Thank you so much, Bobby. Yeah, we're looking at our Luther Family Ford Sky Cam here in South Fargo. Fairly overcast again for today as we've had periods of rain and thunder. Take a look at this. This is a loop of the last 12 hours. We'll wait till it restarts here, starting at about 4 o'clock in the morning when some of those showers and thunderstorms started to develop north of the border and a few down in the southern Red River Valley as well. Those have been continuing and we still have some spotty showers and even Maybe a couple rumbles of thunder in the northern part of the Red River Valley, north of I-94, a few just north of Jamestown, through Carrington, back up towards Devil's Lake, through Grand Forks and Mayville, Thief River Falls, and then back up towards Baudette and International Falls. This is an, a broad overview of what radar is estimating for how much rain has fallen. Areas in blue a couple of tenths to about a half an inch areas in yellow and green. That is where radar is estimating an inch or more. Look at this just north of Breckenridge radar is estimating just about two and a half inches of rainfall and a couple smatterings of near an inch in the Northern Valley as well, where we are continuing to see some rain at this hour. Temperatures, well, we have a big difference, big spread in temperatures across the region this afternoon. 57 in Roseau, Hallock, Langdon 56 in Devils Lake 62 in Grand Forks 77 in Fargo and look at the 80s down in the Southern Valley 84 in Fergus Falls 86 at this time in Sisseton and in Aberdeen. Watching for tonight, we could have some redeveloping showers and thunderstorms in parts of the Southern Valley and Lakes Country. Bobby, I'll have your full hour by hour forecast and what to expect for your Friday and weekend beyond coming up here in just a little bit. I'm sure there's going to be a lot that we can expect in your full <laughs> forecast summer. Thank you. A Walker, Minnesota woman is facing drug related charges after a traffic stop in Crow Wing County over the weekend. Cass County, Minnesota deputies say that they pulled over 42 year old Candace Jackson in connection to an investigation into the use, sales and trafficking of illegal substances. Deputies found one pound of suspected methamphetamine and also seized $6,500 in cash. Jackson was arrested for charges related to drug possession and sale and assisting in the investigation were the Paul Bunny and Drug Task Force and the Baxter Police Department. Authorities say most investigations start with a tip from the public and they encourage people to report suspected drug or other related cr crime information. A Minnesota man is going to prison for more than 40 years in what the FBI is calling the largest sex extortion case ever in the U.S. Federal authorities identified 1,100 minors targeted by 31-year-old Yu Vang of St. Paul. The victims are in every state and also 13 other countries, and they range from ages 12 to 
to 17. The U.S. Department of Justice says from 2015 through 2020, Vang tricked young victims into producing and sending him child pornography, and if they refused, he threatened to and did release their sexually explicit images and videos. The judge says Vang was calculated and cruel and caused everlasting harm. A big fire that took place in a Duluth neighborhood is out, but officials now say that there is significant water and smoke damage to neighboring businesses. Now, the fire started Wednesday night just after 5.30 and had 38 firefighters on scene, including extra command staff. And officials say that winds caused a major problem for firefighters in their efforts to put out those flames that the Duluth Fire Department had to call in assistance from the Superior Fire Department. And officials today said that it could have been a much worse if not for the efforts to keep the fire to one building. Well, September is National Suicide Prevention Month. In recent years, the emphasis on mental health awareness in police departments has become more and more prevalent. And the Moorhead Police Department recently went through wellness training and are one of the only departments in the U.S. with a wellness coordinator in-house. From peer-to-peer -peer groups to dedicated personnel, these are tools in place to help these officers through the smallest to the biggest issues that they face with mental health. And stay tuned with Valley News Live at 5 with a more in-depth look into this story. Well, the Fargo Fire Department will compete against the Fargo Police Department in the second annual Battle of the Badges Blood Drive. Now, the competition between the two departments will be held from 1 to 7 p.m. on September 29th at the American Red Cross Fargo office. And if you're interested in donating blood, you can schedule an appointment by calling 701-733-2767 or visiting redcrossblood.org and entering the sponsor code Fargo Battle. And if you donate in honor of the favorite first responder department, they will, you will receive a Battle of the Badges of Blood Drive t-shirt while supplies last. Well, in Minnesota, there's a new statewide effort to get more Native American histories and cultures into classroom. Mariella Mose spoke with students and teachers about the impact, impact excuse me, that this could have. When I was in school, we spent maybe a day one little section of a chapter on Native people. Alyssa Parkhurst wishes she learned more about the history of her own indigenous culture when she was in high school in the St. Paul Public School District. We don't see ourselves reflected either in the curriculum or in the schools. That is something that the Shakopee Metawakatan Sioux community is trying to change. Over the last year, they surveyed more than 600 educators, curriculum leaders, and nonprofit education groups around the state. Their feedback was put together in this report called Restoring Our Place, where they learned that 90% of educators believe they should be incorporating more Native American content into schools. That number you know, blew us out of the water. Odia Wood Krieger is the principal investigator for this study. She says they also learned 66% of educators felt that they lacked confidence in incorporating Native American content into their teaching. So one of the main things we realized in terms of building confidence was proximity to Native folks. So are they related to a Native person? Do they have Native colleagues? Have they been to a powwow? The Shakopee Metawakatan Sioux pledged $5 million towards this effort. We now have a fun job. We get to figure out how to spend this money that Shakopee has put forward. And we're talking mini grants, we're talking learning opportunities for educators. The hope is for non-Native students to learn more about a history and culture that has deep roots in our state and for Native students to feel authentically represented.